Hello. In this recording, I will be going over assessment problems 6.3, 6.4, and 6.5. <clears throat> I'd like to start by taking a look at some example problems that are similar to um, assessment problems 6, 1, and 6, 2. Uh, when going over through those problems, a couple things that came up. Um, one, when the current is maximum, uh, voltage is going through zero. And the energy is maximum when current is maximum. Also, I wanted to mention that, oh dear, okay, good. Um, when the energy curve increases, as it does here, energy is being stored. When the energy curve decreases, as it is here, energy is being extracted from the device, the inductor in this case. Um, also, you'll notice when the energy is decreasing, the power is negative. When energy is increasing, the power is positive. Uh, let's see. If we look over here with capacitors, energy is um, stored in the capacitor when the power is also positive, as it is here. And energy is being delivered to the capacitor, by the capacitor, excuse me, whenever the power is negative, as it is here. Um, and also, um, as with the inductor, um, the energy is maximum when voltage is maximum. Whereas with the inductor, it was maximum when current was maximum because energy equals one half Li squared. Uh, with capacitors, energy equals one half uh, CV squared. So there's a direct correlation with the maximum uh, with current and an inductor and with voltage with a capacitor. Um, let's see, one more thing that I would like to talk about is, um, let's see, let's go with this. Um, the current through a capacitor must be continuous. So um, the current at zero minus equals the current at zero plus. Whereas voltage through an inductor can be discontinuous. So the voltage at zero minus is not equal to the voltage at zero plus. And we can see that here where the current um, is continuous at zero. And here, um, uh, it's discontinuous at zero for the voltage. For capacitors, the voltage must be continuous, and it cannot change instantaneously. 
So the voltage of zero minus is the same as the voltage of zero plus. The current, however, does not have to be continuous and the current at zero minus is not equal to the current at zero plus. Okay, let's move on to assessment problem 6.3. Uh, this problem is available to you um, in video form through your textbook, and I encourage you to watch that video. Um, the problem states the current in the capacitor of assessment problem 6.2 is, well, let's, um, if you recall, the... Um, We had a capacitor here. That was 0 0.6 microfarads. All right, the current in the capacitor of assessment problem 6.2 is zero. So we now have a current source. And it is zero for T less than zero. And it is three cosine 50,000 T for T greater than or equal to zero. Um, part A, find B of T. So as you can see here, B of T is equal to 1 over capacitance times the integral T0 to T I of DT plus B of T naught. So V of T, based on the information we have, is 1 over 0 0.6 times 10 to the minus 6, integral 0 to T, three cosine 50,000 T dT, plus zero. And all right, so One divided by 0. 0.6 times 10 to the minus 6 is 0. Okay. Sorry about that. I was trying to figure out. Let's move this out of the integral, 3 over 0 0.6 times 10 to the minus 6, 0 to t, cosine 50,000 t dt. So 3 divided by 0 0.6 micro is Five times ten to the six and divided by five times ten to the five four. One, two, three, four, yeah. And this would be sine fifty 
one, two, three, T. From zero to T. And sine of zero is zero. So we would have 100 sine 50,000 T volts. So if we look at our graph up here, here's our voltage and it is a sine wave from plus 100 to minus 100. Okay, part B, the maximum power. Find the maximum power delivered to the capacitor at any one instant of time. All right, so we know that power, power equals voltage times current, which is three, Cosine 50,000 T times 100 sine 50,000 T. Okay, so that would be the same as 300 cosine. 50,000 T sine 50,000 T, which can be written as 150 times 2 sine 50,000 T cosine 50,000 T. And if you look in the appendix, I believe it's appendix G, um, you will find that 2 sine alpha cosine beta is equal to sine alpha plus beta plus sine alpha minus beta. Okay, so in this case, 50,000 T is alpha, and 50,000 T is also beta. So if we write this out in this form, then we can rewrite it as 150 times sine 50,000 T plus 50,000 T plus sine 50,000 T minus 50,000 T, which is zero, and sine of zero is zero. Okay, so this would be 150 sine 100,000 T uh, watts. Okay, if we look at our graph up here, uh, power is graphed here and this would be plus 150 and this would be minus 150. 
So we are asked, let's see, find the maximum power delivered to the capacitor at any one instant of time. Well, the maximum power would be 150. Okay, C. Find the maximum, maximum energy stored in the capacitor at any one instant of time. Okay, we talked before that um, W energy is maximum when the voltage is maximum. <clears throat> So the maximum voltage we found to be 100 here. So W is max when voltage is max. And W max equals 1 half C V max squared, which is one half zero point six times ten to the minus six times one hundred squared. Which comes to three times ten to the minus Three joule, which is three millijoule. Okay, so that takes care of problem assessment problem three. Um, before moving to assessment problem six point four. I would like to review uh, a couple problems, uh, example problems. So we are given a circuit that looks like this. And this is um, finding equivalent inductance. And we have a current through this inductor of 10 amps and current through this inductor of 6 amps. Oops. And we have an initial current here. Let's see. This inductor is 12 millihenries. And this one's 24 millihenries. This is 6 millihenry and 10 millihenry. Okay. Find the equivalent inductance. Okay. 
So here we have uh, two inductors in parallel. And when two inductors are in parallel, we treat them like resistors in parallel. So it will be the product over the sum. And that comes to eight millihenries. So now our circuit will look like this with three inductors. So this is eight millihenry, six millihenry, and 10 millihenry. Um, inductors in series are treated like resistors in series. So we can add these three together. So eight milli plus six milli plus 10 milli is 24 milli. So our equivalent um, circuit would look like this at 24 millihenries. Okay, find the initial current in the equivalent inductor. So we have a node um, here in which I, oops, to get back to here. I is equal to, no, I'm going to erase that. Current going in, I plus six So I plus six amps equals 10 amps. So I equals 10 minus six, I equals four amps. Okay, let's look at another example. place. Okay. All right. Let's see. We have a circuit that looks like this. Oh, let's say goodbye to that. So we have a um, 20 microfarad ca capacitor here. 20 microfarad. Um, Okay, let's change some colors here. And we have 10 microfarads here, um, 15 and 14. We have 12 volts here. And, oh, this is drawn a little differently. Hang on a second.
So we have a straight line here and the curved line here. So this is minus 8 volts and this is plus minus 16 volts. Okay, and this would be the plus and a minus here. Okay, find the equivalent capacitance. You'll notice here that we have two capacitors that are in series and capacitors in series are treated as resistors in parallel. So we have um, the product over the sum, 10 micro, 15 micro over 10 plus 15. which is six microfarads. And those are in parallel with the 14 microfarad capacitor. So capacitors in parallel are treated like resistors in series. So we will add that 14 microfarad capacitor and that gives us 20. And we have 20 here. So we have two capacitors that are the same size in series, which are treated like resistors in series, or parallel. Um, so since they're both the same, it would be, the equivalent would be half the value. Which is 10 microfarads. <clears throat> okay, next find the initial voltage across the equivalent capacitor. So what is the voltage across this capacitor? You'll notice we have um, I'm going to use different color here. Let's use uh, let's use a uh, green. Okay, we can do Kirchhoff's voltage law, and we can add um, the voltage in a closed loop is equal to zero. So starting at this point, minus B KVL. So minus V plus 12. And we can keep going here. Minus 8. plus 16 is equal to 0. We could do it that way, or we could we could go do two equations and each treat each loop independently and you'll get the same results. So, 
12 minus 8 plus 16 equals V. 12 minus 12 plus 16 is 28 minus 8, 20 volts equals V. So that is 20 volts. Find the initial voltage across the equivalent capacitor. And we're done with that example. All right, let's move on to assessment problem 6.4. And then we'll do assessment problem 6.5. OK. The initial values of I1 and I2 in the circuit are shown. OK, let's, let's put those values in. Um, so I1 is plus 3 amps. And I2 is minus 5 amps. Okay, the voltage at the terminals of the parallel inductors is this. So the voltage here is minus 30 e to the minus 5t millivolts for t greater than or equal to zero. If the parallel inductors are replaced by a single inductor, what is its inductance? Okay. A. L E Q is equal to what? So we have two inductors in parallel which are treated like resistors in parallel. So uh, 60 milli times 240 milli over um, 60 milli plus 240 milli is equal to LEQ, which is <laughs> 48 milli. Let's see. 60 times 20, 240 divided is 48. 48 milli, Henry. Okay, so that's part A. All right, B, find the initial current and its reference direction in the equivalent inductor. Okay. Okay, find the initial current and its reference direction in the equivalent inductor. All right, so is equal to three plus minus five, which is minus two amps. And find the initial current. So that's all that they're asking is find the initial current. OK. Use the equivalent inductor to find I of t. So I of t is 
1 over L, 0 to T, V of T dt, plus I of 0. <clears throat> So I1 is 1 over 60 milli times from 0 to t minus 30 e to the minus 5 t milli plus uh, 3 and that is minus 30 milli over 60 milli 0 to t e to the minus 5 t dt plus 3. Minus 1 half times minus 5 e to the minus 5 t um, 0 to t plus 3 which is one e to the minus 5t minus point one plus three which is equal to point one point oops. Point one e to the minus five t plus two point nine amps for t greater than or equal to zero. So that's I one. I two of t is equal to one over two hundred forty millihenries zero to t minus 30 e to the minus 5t milli plus minus 5. Okay, which is equal to minus 30 milli over 240 milli 0 to t e to the minus 5t minus 5. Uh, 3 goes into 240 8 times, so that's minus 1 over 8 times minus 1 over 5 e to the minus 5t from 0 to t minus 5 is... Zero point zero two five e to the minus five t minus one minus five, which is zero point zero two five e to the minus five t minus zero point zero two five minus five which is zero point zero two five e to the minus five t minus 5.025 amps for t greater than or equal to zero. Okay, and I believe we were asked to find I of t. Find the initial
initial current and its reference direction and use the equivalent inductor to find I of T. Okay, that's not using the equivalent inductor. So I of T is equal to I1 of T plus I2 of T. So point one two five e to the minus five t and in case you're wondering what I'm doing here, I just added those two together. Now let's add these two together. And we would get minus five point, no, no, that's not right. Five point oh two five two point nine plus is minus two. One, two, five. Okay, so this is not using um, the equivalent inductance. Let's see. Um, I think I skipped. Use the equivalent inductor. So using the equivalent inductance, I think I skipped this stuff here. Find I1, yeah, I went on to D. Find I1 and I2. Okay. All right, let's, so I just did D. And let's do C. So C, you f use the equivalent inductance. So that's 48 millihenry and the initial current. So let me draw that here. 48 millihenry and the current was minus 2 amps the initial current so I of T is equal to 1 over L 0 to T um, V of t dt plus i of zero. Uh, let's add another page here. Where are we down here? Add a page. There we go. Okay. So i of t is equal to one over forty eight milli. Uh, 0 to t and v of t is still minus 30 e to the minus 5 t dt plus i sub 0 here is minus 2 amps so i of t is equal to minus 30 milli over 48 milli 0 to t e to the minus 5 t dt minus 2 i of t is equal to minus 30 over 48 minus 1 over 5 e to the minus 5t from t to 0 minus 2 is equal to, let's see, 30 divided by 48, 
30, 48 divided, 5 divide is 0 0.125 e to the minus 5t minus 1 minus 2, which is 0 0.125 e to the minus 5t minus 0 0.125 minus 2 which is equal to 0 0.125 e to the minus 5t minus 2.125 amps for t greater than or equal to 0 and that checks with this up here. So, I of t using the equivalent inductor is equal to I1 of t plus I2 of t. All right, let's see. What else? We're good. So verify that the solutions for I1 of t and I2 of t and I of t satisfy Kirchhoff's current law which it does. Okay, now let's move on to assessment problem 6.5. The current at the terminals of the two capacitors shown is 240e to the minus 10t microamps for t greater than equal to zero. Two hundred forty e to the minus ten t microamps for t greater than or equal to zero. The initial value of V one is minus ten volts, and V two is minus five volts. Calculate the total energy trapped in the capacitors as t approaches infinity. Hint. Do not combine the capacitors in series, which we did the last time. Find the energy trapped in each and then add. All right. So energy, let's change to black here. For capacitors is one half C B squared. So let's find the energy in the two microfarad. Oh yeah, that's okay. So energy one is equal to well first we need to find the voltage. We have the initial voltage, but we don't have, um, so we have V, V of zero is equal to V one of zero is equal to minus 10 volts. So V one of T is one over C one, zero to infinity. I of t dt plus v1 initial. Um, and we know v2 initial is equal to minus 5 volts. And v2 of t is 1 over c2 zero to infinity, I of T dt plus V2 initial value. All right, so let's solve for V1. V1 of T is equal to one over two microfarad, um, zero to infinity, 240, uh, 
e to the minus 10t micro farad dt plus minus 10 volts. This is 240 micro over 2 micro, 0 to infinity, e to the minus 10 t dt, minus 10, is 120 times minus 10, uh, e to the minus 10 t from 0 to infinity minus 10. Um, this would be minus 12. And e to the minus infinity is 0. And e to the 0 minus 0 is 1. So this would be 12 minus 10, which is 2 volts. That's V1. Okay, let's do the same thing for V2. V sub 2 of t is equal to 1 over 8 microfarads, from 0 to infinity, 240 e to the minus 10t micro dt plus an initial value of minus 5. This is 240 micro over 8 micro e to the not times one over minus ten e to the minus ten t from zero to infinity minus five 240 divided by 8 is 30, divided by minus 10, and e to the minus infinity is 0, minus e to the minus 0, which is 1, minus 5, so this would be minus 3 times minus 1, minus 5, it's 3, minus 5, which is minus 2. Okay, so we're looking for the energy. So, 1 half C2 V2 squared which is one half C2 is eight micro and V2 we said is four, minus two squared W2 would be one half eight is four times four is 16 joule microjoule and energy in the first inductor is or capacitor excuse me is one half C1 V1 squared which is one half times two micro times 2 volts squared is 4 divided by 2 is 2 would be 4 microjoule and
w equals w1 plus w2, which is 4 plus 16 microjoules. 20 microjoule. All right. And that's it for that problem. Okay. That is the end uh, for this recording. And I'm going to stop here. And we will do finish up chapter six with mutual inductance review and example problems.